I am is who I am. Mm. I don't have thinking. I have never done a presentation in my life or written a book that I had a plan for. Never. I couldn't do it. I can't function that way. I function completely in an energetic stream of informing in the moment. Like, for example, yesterday. I don't know who's there. I have to speak to to the frequency of who's in front of me in the moment. Mm -hmm. I don't know what we're going to do. I do have and have developed some basic tools to help people move out of this experience. To me, the experience of identifying and perceiving the world through your ego is like being in a house or being in the jungle in the dark, okay? Every moment, you have to figure out from your outer senses what's what's happening, and it's all very potentially threatening. So you have to be defensive and high alert and completely prepared for an ambush, okay? that Now, imagine if you were in your house that way. Have you ever been in a blackout, for example? You go, oh, everybody don't move. I mean, you're sitting on your couch, okay? And, and it's just like the, the response is fear and defense. So imagine if you turn on the light, it's not just one thing that happens. It's not like, oh, I see I'm on. Your whole paradigm shifts. Everything, if it's in the light, your whole way of being would be very different. You would be informed and you would move through life, through your home with, with confidence. And, and you'd, you'd have a 360 whole shift of this is here, this is here, this is here, this is how. With none of it being rationally thought out. You see what I mean? Hmm. You're just informed. You're working in a different awareness frequency. So to me, turning on your intuition is turning on the light of your spirit to see things through the light of your spirit. And when you see things through the light of your spirit, you don't have to be on high defense. You're informed, but you can see where there's maybe some potential incongruencies and things that don't align up. You can see where your ego will jump in and wants to protect you because it's part of your animal self. Your physical human self is really wired to survive. So it's always ready. So I call it the guard dog. And um, and I know that we drop into that easily, so my tools are for others to jump out. But I'm pretty much out. You see, I know when I'm getting into a what I call a fifi mode, you know, my barking dog poodle. And I know that it's because my physical body needs something. Hmm. It's tired. It's saturated. It needs quiet. It needs to go, from, it needs to walk. It, it, and and I, if I, my physical body's on overload, my spirit energy separates. So I've learned. So I keep, my tools are all to help people be aware of their physical body and turn on the light. And I give them, I give you experiences because information is the problem, in my opinion. Information, too much information, you get tricked into thinking you know something. You just know about it. You know, it's like, like when I was in our workshop yesterday, he volunteered. He came forward. I always, I don't ever pick. You, you, you pick yourself. But he wouldn't have understood at all if I didn't walk him step forward, step back, step forward, step back, and give him a choice. He had to have a choice. So that's why I kept going back and forth and it's like, well, where do you, what, what do you prefer? Right. And it was the choice number one is right and wrong, and choice and, and number, number two, two is third space. Hmm. And third space, what would you define third space as? Third space is, first of all, you unplug from trying to figure out, it's like right or wrong according to whom? What authority figure in your memory or in your field are you trying to read and please and be like, thus abandon yourself, is the primary motive of right and wrong. Second motive of right and wrong is that there's only one solution to life when there's not. There's, there's a minimum of 19 solutions to every problem, which comes from the cube of space, which is the metaphysical structure of how we can come 
to any different degree of solution. So right and wrong is that there's one solution which sets up a catastrophic problem. If I get it wrong and I don't get it right, I'm screwed. I have just I have just blocked myself in and I'm doomed. So people get stuck in right and wrong and that's why you go round and round and round in your head. Mm. It's like you're not really confused, you're threatened by being potentially making a choice for some existential out there authority figure that's kind of a nebulous blob that you will most likely fail because you don't even know who that right or wrong per- entity is. So you freeze. Where third space is, I'm just getting back to my authentic frequency, my true tone, my true vibration, my true music, because it's not words. It's feeling. It's vibrational congruency. And that feels true for me now. If the circumstances change, I may have to shift my frequency. It's like surfing. Mm. So the third space is I'm listening to my inner tone for guidance. I'm not trying to second guess what authority figure out there that has power over me, including God, could is ready to play gotcha with me. Okay, so I step out of that paradigm. I don't live in that paradigm. And the tools I give people help them step out as well because that paradigm is a construct of your ego. It had, you had to survive before you could really know your own identity or were ever empowered to. So it's actually a compilation of, it's like a, 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 a stew of everybody's fear-based, controlling, power-tripping um, conversation that, that really has, there, like, there, is no, there is no them. Mm. It's a mess running you. When you go to the third space, you're just recognizing it's all made up. It's all made up. I, I, I'm just going to come back to what feels true for me for now because I believe that I, like everything in nature, have the natural design to know how to move toward my greatest natural flourishing. And I also know that part of my nature is supported by the universe. I, only the ego is a lonely entity by itself. Spirit is connected. Every breath we share, we're, we're never outsiders. We always belong and we're always connected. And we feel that. So you don't have to believe me. That's why my, my number one book is Trust Your Vibes, not Trust Mine. <laughs> you know, trust, trust, but it's, it's vibes, it's vibration. Trust the vibration of you, not the thinking of you. So, so when it comes to tools, I've been teaching a long time. And I watch, I've taught all over the world, I study what works and what doesn't. And I hone these simple tools. And I know that the most important way to learn is to have fun. Because when you're having fun, your ego isn't running the show. Mm. It isn't. Your ego will never come up with the answers. It can be a good, it can be a good helper. But it's mostly positioned in our lives now to be fighting for control. So if I give you an image, because the subconscious mind le- learns in pictures. It doesn't learn in words. Did you know that? So if I tell you, you have a little barking dog driving the bus of your life, and you're in the back seat, you're strapped in, and you're letting this little barking dog drive around and around the block, you get it. It's like, well, I don't want, that. I don't want that, that entity of me to drive the bus of my life. I can give you a thousand hours of lecture on how to let your higher divine self take over and meditate. And, or I can say, you got a chihuahua driving you around the block. You'll get it. And I watch people get it really fast because I'm taking you back to what you, what you are. Hmm. So I, you, don't, you don't have to trust me. Like I said yesterday, you know, in that U2 song, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. You, that's it. That's what you're looking for, to drop back into that place. And the other thing I said, and it's true, is, and you know it's correct because you don't, it's quiet. It, it, it's not noisy. Yeah, it's I'm like sure you like ask a question. Once you got that right? letter, mm. 
your barking dog was going, rrr, rrr, but there was a part of you that was quiet. Mm. So it's a long answer to tools, but I'm not strategizing my life. I truly am psychic improv. <laughs> I show up and I trust 100% that my spirit can meet whatever meets me and that we will create something good. 100%. That's so beautiful. I'm sure you have like countless stories of these things happening. Like this is this is not, okay, I'll give you a story because it's not just specific to me. I can teach this. So I have a client um, who lived in California and was married with two children under two with a very tight-knit family, but to the point that it was run by the parents. And the, it was a very much you do what we say kind of thing. And she had this desire to move, to relocate to Tennessee. She just felt Tennessee. Her husband was all on board with it. He was He's a coach. They wanted to emancipate from the parental true support, but also too much control. Well, the family was not on board, took it very personally, and said, first of all, this was recently, you'll never find a home. You'll, you're, you, you don't have any realtor. There's no real, there's no properties. You can't afford it. You can't, how are you going to do this? You don't know anybody, just really not on board. And use with me coaching her, she went online and she just scanned. She found a home in Tennessee. They said, well, there might be a bidding war. And she said, well, this is what I'm going to bid. They got it. It's like a needle in a haystack. When they arrived, bought it at sight unseen. It's perfect. Took her two children under two, which I don't know if, you, if you've been around little babies. That's nonstop, no sleep, crazy town. Kids were a dreamboat. They went across town. Then she wanted to start a business, and we had three conversations. She knew what she wanted to do. She wants to create and has all the skill. It is her skill to create not only find a home, but to create the environment that really elevates the spirit. So when you walk in, it's called the intentional home. Mm. Okay, she's. we're talking about this. And I said, because I meant to her, I I said, on the, I said, okay, we've had three conversations about this. I'm not going to talk to your barking dog again. Mm. I'm sorry. You know what to do. And she said, I said, so you decide because our, our mentoring is going to pretty much come to an end. There's no point in me doing this with you. I will respect your choice to let the barking dog drive the bus, but I'm not going to talk your barking dog out of the driver's seat, okay? I refuse. And I know it's a waste of time. I'm not going to do it. Barking dog loves attention. The more attention I would give to that part of your ego brain, the more inflated it becomes. It's like dough. The more you work it, the more it expands. So, I, so she said, okay. And then her husband had a big fit, too, because she had been overspending. And he said, this has got to stop. You've got to go to work. So in one week, she went from, I don't know, I made a mistake, don't know what I'm doing, I have an idea, I don't know if it'll work, on and on and on, to creating a website, beautiful, set up her Instagram, set up her socials, beautiful, set up her business, got, let her neighbors know, let everybody know, and is now contacting major networks for making this a national show, and it will work. It's it flew from around and around the block to she just stepped into the third space and stopped letting her ego roadblock her. And it just flipped. She's, I can't believe it. For, she just sent me a testimonial that I was going to give Mind Valley. I can't believe it. I can't believe this happened. And if your ego drives the bus of your life, you're not going to have a successful life, even if you make money. Lots of it like you did. Because the ego is isolated. And our big cultural myth is that if you make enough money, you will feel good. And my clients who make lots of money who don't live from the spirit are the most pained because they 
did the formula, drank the Kool-Aid, got the result, and then felt duped. Because why do I still feel so lonely and isolated? And it's just the right-wrong paradigm is a dead end. Period. Now, I get, I'm challenged by language because what do we say, I teach intuition? Well, not really. I teach you that you have six senses and it's an exponential awakening. It's, an, it's like turning a light on in a dark house, not one. You don't all of a sudden know where your keys are. You see them, and you see the door, and you see this, and you see that. So you see everything. You experience and see your connection to all the things simultaneously. And you're not thinking. You're experiencing. I'm experiencing. I see that. I, I'm hearing that. I'm sensing. Do you see what I mean? Mm. So language boxes me in and I'm okay with that but when I'm actually teaching people they're going to get a whole lot more than what they think they're bargained for they think they're going to give them a bunch of little tools to find your keys or your parking space but instead you're going to find yourself mm. and that will then find everything else you're looking for and that's why you call it exponential right it is exponential like well how would you describe sitting in a dark house and I turn on the light it's transformational shift. Mm -hmm. You're in a different experience from a blackout to the light. And the thing is, the light is here. It is in your heart. It is a conscious organ. It is a conscious, aware organ. It's 5,000 times more perceptive than your, your brain. And when you let that be the eye that experiences life primarily, it literally, and I showed people, you see the light? You see, they're, they're visually different. They light up. Remember that beautiful woman? Mm. She was dark, and then she lit up. And our rock star was dark, and then he lit up. The light is a real thing that emanates out of your face, through your eyes, through your skin, through your energy field. And that light guides you shows you where what you where you're going like for example how did you get how did you experience the letter get that information how did it come to you it was uh, almost like this is a, the funny analogy coming to me but like if you're in like a bubble bath mm -hmm. and like that little like duck like just rises to the surface. Right. Like it's like you knew it was in there. Pops up. And it's just there and you're like, oh, hi. Good. Mm -hmm. It didn't come trotting through the ticker tape of your brain that you figured something out. Mm -hmm. It surprised you. It's one of the ways you know it's your, your guidance. Mm -hmm. it's, it's usually a surprise. It's coming from a different source. It's coming from the light. So when we think about kids mm -hmm. and and just children let's say from the no older than like 14 15 probably right mm -hmm. this is pretty natural for them i don't think so i think that people start losing connection when they go to school mm -hmm. um for me what happened was i was in a family dynamic seven in my family seven kids very intuitive very spirit oriented mom I grew up with one one piece of information. Always trust your vibes. Don't trust what anyone says. Don't trust because it's it was what really helped her and saved her life. Through the war in World War II, just quick backstory. She was separated as a child from her family and ended up in a prison and war camp in Germany. She's Romanian. Then she got sick, went deaf, a whole lot of things. The only thing that saved her was trust your vibes. And she used to say, I'm very lucky, I'm deaf, so I don't have to hear negativity. So I grew up in a family dynamic where I had an infrastructure internally that continued affirming that. But when I went to school, my biggest shock was that kids in my first and second grade didn't. Mm -hmm. It was a shock to me. I had no other paradigm. 
And I think we start getting indoctrinated the minute we go to school to better figure out what the teacher's telling us. And unless you're in some highly enlightened school, you're going to be told that the way to survive here is to, to do what I tell you and what I imply. Not just what I tell you, but implied rules as well. And you will, if you cross that line, you are going to lose your place and you won't belong. So all of a sudden, you're... You lose that connection unless you have an internal support by five, six, seven, Hmm. unless your family models otherwise. Got it. So then you mentioned something earlier where the more your physical body is in trouble, Mm -hmm. the quieter or the further away that like spirit body gets. Right. Right. In the case of someone who has let's call it like they're in a fight or flight state Mm -hmm. all the time Mm -hmm. when they're awake, maybe even when they're sleeping, right? Mm -hmm. Is that a similar concern? Like the spirit will be a lot harder to reach? Spirit's always there as long as your heart speaks, but it's harder for your mind to perceive Mm -hmm. through the noise. That's why I said to go, ah, it works because that's fight or flight and it's blocked. It's blocking your throat, it's blocking your heart, it's clouding your brain. So purge it, ah, and then quiet. Then you can drop in and a little more graceful. I told you, open the jaw, ah. You open till you hear click in your ear. It opens the chakra at the back of your head, Hmm. your throat, your high heart, your heart. You can really go, you can feel it open and then ah, drop in. Every meditation, every spiritual practice around the world, amen, aloha, aha, wakantanka, it's like, ah, is the sound and tone of your consciousness centered in your heart where it belongs. And when it's centered here, the brain quiets. Ah. Mm. So that's why I give you these super practical ways. They're They're like psychic mechanics. I feel like I'm a psychic chiropractor. That's funny. I feel like that's so true. Yes. And, and so, and I chiropract you back into flow, but you're, you're wired. You're, you're wired. I'm not trying to, I'm educating your brain to relax. Hmm. And I said, the last thing I said, and we'll always say, your spirit can take care of you. Whoever told you that, your spirit can take care of you hmm. really well really well and it's not going to come through words it's coming through feeling and then you have to interpret that feeling through your imagination the little duck pops up you got it and it drops in like a hollow it's like whole body whole down that's why we're calling it downloads but the other thing that i'm excited about and i'm serious because i've been do i've been out in the field for ever and considered the weirdo and the dismissed and laughed at and I'm not scientific and it's like oh, y'all I'll catch up but we are in a zeitgeist this is starting to collectively catch on and it's very exciting that there's enough of a shift in a momentum and because we entrain with one another and this is why Mind Valley University is such a good, brilliant, genius concept and, and download that our education system was the problem. So let's create a new one that doesn't just address children, that addresses the consciousness of every age. So the whole, the whole matrix shifts. Mm. The whole family dynamic shifts. The whole community shifts because we're we're communicating with one another non-verbally all the time and we want to feel like we're connected so i trust that it's happening i'm just enjoying watching it and what i say to people is like look it's very important that we educate our brains but do know that's dog training And it's important to train your barking dog. It'll be your best friend. But it's not your spirit. 
Mm. So <laughs> I, I understand that I, I know some of your answer to this question, but I'm, I'm curious to hear you elaborate because it's like every time I ask you something, there's seven great stories that I, I'm going to devour and just listen to on repeat. When you can anticipate, right? Like right now, as an example, right? It's like everything you're saying and all my questions, they do come through feelings and then they go into images and then I have to figure out like, what is that? What am I trying to ask here? Mm -hmm. And when you can anticipate that there will be these waves, mm -hmm. right? Waves of like my body is doing really well. So I just extreme access to that spirit energy and I can just like live in complete flow. But I have to share something though. I want to correct something. Yes. It doesn't, I'm not saying you have to physically be healthy life is hard mm. this is a bumpy ride and we are affected by the wear and tear what we have to be is in our body not in our head that's what i'm saying and when you're in your body and it might be suffering then you can communicate and understand but if you're totally numbed out you've unplugged that's when the spirit is not in this when your spirit isn't in your body there's no guidance and you can tell when your spirit's not in your body very clearly look at someone's eyes i had them do it right away drive by eyes these are drive by eyes to you right now just <laughs> you can feel it, right? Doesn't it annoy you? It's like, where are you? Mm. And so I'm not saying, look, you have to be in good health to be intuitive. No way. I'm saying you have to be in that heart. You have to be in your heart body and not in your head and disconnected or numbed out. Okay. So then if we're anticipating that there might be times where there's more drive by eyes and it's and, and we know that there's going to be times where we because i'm i'm also in my experience of it when we slip we don't know we slip for a while because it's it's hard to realize it you get better over time right? here's what i what i do because listen i you slip for one reason i'm afraid mm. okay you may not it might be a nebulous fear it might be but it is a blob of fear it hijacks you so the tool is to take your keys because keys are a symbol to the subconscious. That I'm going to unlock something. Take your keys in your hand and you go for a walk and you, sit and you out loud verbalize, I'm afraid of failing. Breathe. I'm afraid of being unloved. Breathe. I'm afraid of being humiliated breathe and then name three things you see right in front of you i see the tree ah there is a passing car oh, okay because fear is not happening in the moment it's it's what you're anticipating and what you're trying to manage it's either it's not right in front of you right now so you just say okay there's and you know who taught me this my mother when she was in a, in, in a German work camp, a pre-concentration camp, that's how they, she survived. I mean, talk about legitimate threat, but what am I afraid of? And she said, well, in this moment, it's not happening. What's happening in this moment is there's a little pebble on the floor, and there's a, there's, there's a tree I can see a little further down. And so this is not some bypass this is a legitimate tool when you are in either a an emotional fear or a le legitimate threat physically what is happening in this moment and so i'll tell you a funny anecdote well it's not funny it's pretty impressive so my mom was in an evacuation in the war and they were all put on a train and they were being sent to a camp which they didn't know were there but they knew so nobody was allowed to speak, and she's got no family. She's 12 years old. She's looking around, talking to her spirit, always talking to my spirit because my spirit said, pay attention to me because everything else said you're going to die. So she made that choice. For one, this train's going. They're packed like sardines. 
She's paying attention moment to moment. What's happening right now? Take a breath. What's happening right now? Take a breath. For one split second, the soldier turned his head and her spirit said, jump. She jumped off the train, landed in a field, saved her life. Wow. She lit, She was in the field and then she found her way to a farmhouse and the woman that owned the, that was at the farm and she was, took pity on my mother, mother was a child, hit her for a while, then turned her in to the authorities, but she was no threat then. So they just put her in, in, in a camp and then the next thing you know, she's working in a kitchen, she survived. But in that breath, What's happening right now? She, he looked. She looked. He looked. Pew. So that I, that's that's the informing I got received as a child. Trust your vibes. Yeah. So you see, I'm not offering a tool that is some trick. It actually keeps bringing you back to the part of you that will take care of you. Mm-hmm. So I'm afraid. Yeah, I can be afraid. Very much so. I'm afraid that my estranged relationships will never heal. Okay. Breathe. Where are you right now? I'm in my body. I'm right now. What's in front of me right now? Check with my vibration. I'm in integrity with myself right now. Let the rest go. So you you name the fear because it's not fear that stops you. The ego's fearful. The human body's temporary. We're going to have fear. It won't go away. Survival is the animal part of us. But fear isn't what stops you. It's hiding fear and stuffing fear. When you express it, you move the energy, and you can get back to source. You can get back to the self that will take care of you because fear can inform you. And if it's a legitimate fear like my mom was in, then the spirit jump. Mm. When you're expressing fear on a weekly, daily, whatever basis, do you write it? Do you speak it? I know there's probably not a better way, but what do you do? I know my, I know my signatures for me because I'm a very intense person. Um, if I'm impatient or I am get angry, I am in fear. I just know it. So what I say immediately, because I don't like that self, I'll say out loud, what am I afraid of? And I will start naming it out loud. And that tones it down. Mm -hmm. What do I want to happen? I ask my spirit, you show me this, unless there's a better thing to happen. This is what I want to have happen. I'm afraid it's not going to happen. But I'm also more open to you show me what needs to happen that's better for me Mm -hmm. than my idea. So, but I have developed an intolerance for fear. I don't like that self. I don't want to be that self. So I'm aware. So for other people, they get quiet. Some people get sleepy. Some people get real needy. You know, whatever it is, just know it's a strategy for survival. That's all. You don't judge it. You just observe it. Okay, what's this that's happening what am I afraid of? And start naming it out loud. You'll notice that my experience is that when you start naming it, it's just two or three things. They're mm-hmm. just running your circuits. You're saying it in many different ways. In many different ways. It, this, But once you start saying it, it starts breaking apart. It doesn't control you anymore. But do take a breath and keep your eyes open. I pointed out to the student yesterday, when you close your eyes, you're numbing out. You're not going to a higher space. You're running away <laughs> bring you right back. Stay present. Keep your eyes open. Be present. Breathe. Ah. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? Ah, there's the cup. There's the floor. There's the plant. There's my hand. Ah, what do I want to have happen? Ah, the ego is afraid that won't. Okay, ask my spirit. Name your spirit. Mine's bright light. Okay, bright light. What? What? What's what's what? What do I need to know, feel, do? And that's why I have a prayer. It's an intention. It's a mantra. It's a prayer. I say every day. I have since I was twelve. 
Divine spirit within me, move me in the direction of my highest good this day. Move my mind, move my body, move my words, move my emotions in the direction of my highest good and my ability to be of the highest service. And then watch your life start going all over mm-hmm, the place. Mm-hmm. It works. I, I, I felt like sometimes you say that more than just in the morning, yeah? It's my way of being. Do you mm. want to hear a wild story? Please. Okay. Because I, I'm not giving anybody chewing gum. This is all grounded in. So I'm I, my kids at the time, I have two daughters. They're 17 months apart, and they were in preschool. One was in three-year-old class. One's in four-year-old class. 17 months apart is yeah. that's, that's a challenge. I lived in Chicago. Big snowstorm. Going to pick up my kids from their morning session. I, you pick them up like at 1230. They go at 9 to 1230. So I'm driving to school to pick up my kids, and my spirit said, turn. So I turn the car, and I'm now driving away from school, thinking to myself, this is interesting. Where are we going? Really very aware of what's happening. So now I know I'm late for my kids. I'm driving in a snowstorm away. I have no idea where I'm going, and my spirit says, turn. I turn again. Now I'm a good half a mile away from school big storm, zero idea, but see, my intellect doesn't run my life. My spirit runs my life. Curious, super curious, am thinking, what am I going to say to my kids? I'll have to explain this, but they know me. I'm also thinking they know me, even at that age. I come to a stop sign in a neighborhood, blizzard conditions, because I live by the lake, so we have what we call lake effect snow. A toddler runs in front of me in a diaper no shoes, no coat, no adult, right as my car hit that intersection. That's why I was taken there. They put the car in park, get out and go get her. She's running wild. I grab her. She freaks out, doesn't know me. I put her under my coat. Thank you, spirit. That's why I was brought here. Parked the car and walked. I'm really late, but I'm walking, and I see an open door. Okay, there's the door. I ring the bell. This woman comes out, and she goes, oh, my God, what are you doing with my baby? And I looked at her, and I said, is this your baby? And she said, well, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the babysitter. I said, okay, well, not, you're not doing a good job today. And I got her name. I got her number. I got all the information, and I let the parents. I went back and told the parents after what happened, which, of course, appalled them. And I said, I found your baby running in the snow four blocks away and brought her home, found her. So that divine spirit moved me in the direction of my highest good. So, of course, I pick up my children. I explain. Teachers think I'm a nut. I tell my kids, drive them to the house because I had to explain to them where I was. They wanted to go meet the baby, but I knew that was beyond the pale of possible. I was like, no, she's in trouble now. We can't go in. But that's how I live. So so earlier you mentioned um, with the story of your father and husband that... And brother. And brother, yeah. That's a whole other one that I can get into. But with All the, my male pieces fell apart at once. Yeah, so I've got, I've got two questions here that are pretty great, um, or two things I'm just super curious about. And the first one is you mentioned that for the husband, that this is like part there were certain aspects of his journey which were control and like Mm -hmm. just being with you is like the exact opposite. Yeah, it was too much. So so let me ask you, when it comes to this idea of spirit, right? Mm -hmm. When you say spirit and what I hear is that we all have like a spirit, it's connected to everything, right? Okay. We are spirit. We don't Mm. we don't have a spirit. Mm. We are spirit. That is our nature defined by the breath and when that breath leaves for the final time we're gone so then when it comes to partnership Mm -hmm. if both people are as like tapped in and as regularly connected as you are you're gonna have a wonderful time with anyone that's also anyone yes you will have the best relationships the best like so wildly entertaining and fun and genius and nobody's controlling anybody. Everybody's trusting. And one of my one of the things I teach people is trust the spirit in you, trust the spirit in others, and trust the spirit. 
that gives us all life. And your life's going to run pretty well. My barking dog, I don't trust to run my life. I certainly don't trust yours. Most of the world's having a dog fight. And we're completely disconnected from the spirit that gives us life. So, I, and this is something important. People think, well, I have a spirit. No, you are this spirit. You have an ego. And when you die, that ego dies. But your spirit continues. You have a body. But you are spirit. And that's a bit of a chewing gum for people. They have to flip that around a little bit to drop in. So for all relationships, for all partners, the thing to be thinking about is like in any moment of hardship, can I quiet the barking dog? Yeah, it's a, it's a dog fight. Mm. It's a dog fight. Mm. My Fifi would get into big dog fights with my ex-husband's German Shepherd. And it was ugly. Not nice. And once that part of you goes over, it's pure animalistic survival. Mm. It's why you say horrible things and get violent and because you're on a channel that's just survival. Yeah. So let's say I gave you a magic wand mm -hmm. and you could create a new school system for the planet and you, your daughters are just getting out of school at this point, right? Mm -hmm. Well, no, my daughters are adult women who are teaching mm -hmm. this, and I have a granddaughter. Mm -hmm. So this is like fifth generation now of this consciousness. Fifth generation. Mm -hmm. My okay. grandmother was a Romanian healer. Whoa. It's Okay. It, yeah, this goes, this is something I'm just perpetuating. I am not inventing. I'm just taking to a bigger field. Okay, so if you had a magic wand and you could create a school system, mm -hmm. what would that school system look like? Well, the first thing is I would teach the child immediately before they ever set foot in a school that you are a beautiful spirit and that everything about you is here to have a wonderful adventure and to create. And the important thing is you can only create if you're really tuned in to your truth, your true self. So you have to listen for that and express it all the time. And to know the difference. I would teach children very young. Is the light in your eyes? Is the smile in your face? And I would ask them always, what does your spirit say? When you're, when you're even can speak, you can answer that. Because that's natural. I would create opportunities for the spirit in children to explore for a good long while. Maybe a bit like Waldorf, but even that got a little bit regimented because I investigated Waldorf, and I don't like don'ts. Don't do this, don't. I was like, just let the organic self discover the joy of learning instead of the indoctrination of learning. So I would create a lot of opportunity and a lot of movement, a lot of singing, because that keeps the heart open. A lot of dancing, because that keeps you out of the head. A lot of rest and quiet time. And the days would be shorter. I think that it would be better if, if you could have real rest at the midday and then you know play again. And just kind of like the way indigenous cultures do it. They got it. And that you don't have one source of love that you have communities of love, you have your grandmother, your mother, your aunties, your sisters, your neighbors, your, that you are not dependent on pleasing one person for your source of love or one teacher or one that I would create experiences and affirmations with children that you are loved. Mm -hmm. You are loved so much and so that it's not a scarcity. Those are the things that I would put very much. It's certainly how I raised my kids. It's how I was raised. And I think it, it, what I notice, and I'm not saying I'm not, I'm not fearful, but I'm not run by fear. And actually, that's what challenged my ex-husband. It pissed him off because I would be so fearlessly willing to follow my, my heart and my vibes. It was scary for him. I can appreciate that. But it always worked out, so that's the part I didn't appreciate. It's like, well... Where, what was the awful thing that happened? 
there was no awful thing that ever happened. There was no bankruptcy. There was no affairs. There was no collapse. There was no dire sick. There was no awful thing to say, see, you did this. And it just was a, it just was a, a chronic state of, I don't know where this is going and I can't live with that. And so I, I accept that about me. I think that we have to, our, our relationships are so, so entrenched in control. And I'm such a free spirit. I'm not a wildcat. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty grounded, but people who are truly free spirits piss people off. And we get called. Well, they piss barking dogs off. Right. They definitely, and thank you, Skip, they do. They piss guard dogs off. Yeah, I love people like you. This is great. But don't you, do you see what I'm saying? I know that I'm not, that's why I said, be a weirdo. You're not going to necessarily be popular if if you're with somebody who's disconnected from their own spirit. If they're not connected to their spirit, you are just an unmanageable nutcase that's going to trigger their every, every fear. I get that about me. But I also have learned... And I learned this also from my mom, too. Humor. Humor will actually bring someone into their spirit very quickly. Mm. Barking dogs have no sense of humor. Mm. The minute you laugh, God is bouncing between two people. You are spirit to spirit. If you're having a genuinely shared laugh, it's a healing. That is a beautiful, beautiful thing. So last question, because I know time is important and I can show you good coffee shops. Okay, good. If you were fully tuned in right now, which I'm sure you are, is there any piece of wisdom or something coming up that you feel like would be good to share? I feel an urgency to tell people it's not the amount of information that you can inhale and pack in your brain that's going to protect you from whatever thing you fear, poverty, loneliness, isolation. It's the opposite. Empty yourself. Empty. Empty your brain. Ah, exhale. Let the breath go. That opens the vagus nerve, de-stresses you. Empty, 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 because then you're a available to be guided and the part of you that will guide you your spirit is reliable it is able to do a good job it will take care your your true self will take care of you better than any strategy of brilliance your ego can come up with and it's more fun that's what i want people to know empty Thank you for that. So when people fall in love with you watching this and listening to this, where do they go? How do they get so much more of you? Well, there's a couple of things. Of course, on Mind Valley, you can start with the Six Sense Superpower because that really is, with their genius, probably the best actual course I've ever created in terms of conveying the feeling and the fun and the, the, the energy. And I have... I have two books that I think everyone, that I believe everyone can gain a tremendous amount from that you want to kind of read and put in the bathroom or by your bedside. Trust your vibes and ask your guides. Those are my two. Then you can come to my website from there. You can see all the different, but those things are pretty much it. Yeah. Have you made like an R&B or rap song? With those well, the two one things you heard that, yesterday. Yeah. I had everybody do the breath of life. I wrote that song. Amazing. And it's called Love Your Life. And it's just a song where you you move and breathe for three minutes and 40 seconds every day, but you move in ways you've never moved before because that confuses your brain patterns mm. and breaks them up. And so by the end of it, you're so your brain is so confused, but your body is so infused with oxygen and spirit. You just feel good. It's a reset back to natural. Thank you so much. (laughs) I'm so honored. This was fun. Thank you for inviting me to share this time with you, Skip. 
Yeah, it's really beautiful. I'm, I'm just, yeah, this was great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.